Today, we're going to talk about how we see the future of lifecycle management and automation in the 5G core. Hi, my name is Brett Coford. I'm part of product management for lifecycle management and automation in the 5G core. So first off, what if we talked about being able to do an upgrade to the network in hours instead of months? And what if we could do many of the activities that we run today without steering the traffic away from the site under maintenance? What if we could switch the operations team from being deep in the hands-on to supervising automation that does the work for them? With the complexity of the networks we have today, we're bringing in a large number of additional layers and components that need to be lifecycle managed. If we take the scenario of a security vulnerability, if the patch was available tomorrow, how long would it take your team to roll the patch out network-wide? How would you react? Would that be months to complete the task? And what about the marketing team if they have a new feature they'd like to release to market and they need a feature enabled in the network? How long would it take to roll out that change into the whole network? And would you be first to market and beat your competitors? With the additional complexity and increase in layers, and coupled with the expectation of a lower total cost of ownership for 5G core, we can see we have a compelling event. Something has to change. These are comments that we have from many of our customers today, and we understand that the current ways of working can't scale to reach our ambitions. We must therefore transform and change. What I'd like to share with you today is a little bit about the future of automation and continuous integration and continuous deployment. I'd like you to take you through the transformation journey and talk around how we change to an agile way of working and ultimately we will do upgrades in completely new ways. We can think of the change across three dimensions. The first one is people. Selecting the right people to drive and empower the change is critical. They will take the rest of the organization with them and they will be key to making a lasting change. The second dimension is processes. Moving away from highly hands-on processes is what we need to do in this phase and introduce automation that can scale instead of scaling the teams. The platform is the third dimension we need to look at, and that's about bringing the right features at the right layers. In-service software upgrades together with automated acceptance testing tools are key to unlocking better ways to upgrade on the platform. So how do we prepare for this transformation? The first thing to do is secure a guiding light. We can see two ways of driving these changes through. The first way we see is the horizontal flow. This is where we want to bring a return on investment sooner. This means we make changes in the small scale, first in the lab, then introduce that to pre-production and then finally into the production network. This method is suitable for larger organizations and where the change may be sustained over several years. As mentioned, the return on investment comes sooner but the sustained change over a long period might be too much in some cases. The second method of implementation is the vertical flow. And this might be suitable where we have a smaller ambition or a smaller network to manage. In this case, we'd first develop all of the procedures in the lab, and then we would introduce all of them into pre-production and production as a single change. This has a potential for return on investment over a longer period, but it is also less change to manage when it comes to implementation. So how do we build the vision? If we take the Horizon 1 view, this represents the current way of working for many. This is where operations are driving the activity with tools, and the activities are always run off-peak to minimize the disturbance to customers. The other thing is we always need to traffic offload in Horizon 1. This method does work and has been used by many for a long time. However, we don't see this scaling due to the number of changes that we need to manage in the new systems. In Horizon 2, we introduce in-service software upgrades. This is a key change where we no longer have to steer the traffic away from the site under maintenance. We're still using people and tools to hold the procedure together in this phase, and we're still doing it in a maintenance window, but the change to in-service software upgrade means that we have less variables to manage on the night and we have less scheduling conflicts to handle. In Horizon 3 is where we start to introduce pipelines. This is where we remove all of the manual steps. 
our operations teams are now supervising pipelines. And combined with in-service software upgrades, we unlock parallel execution. This is where we have a chance to make a real gain in how we deliver a change to the whole network. In Horizon 4, this is where we introduce advanced capabilities and continuous delivery. This means the changes are flowing continuously from Ericsson into the customer's lab environment, and then from the customer's lab environment into pre-production sites and eventually into production. In this way, we're doing continuous change end to end, and this is the future we'd like to see. This will shorten the times for rollout with parallel activity and low touch across the whole flow. Our 5G core automation strategy today builds on our learnings from leadership in 5G core globally. With the change to cloud native, we now see transformation is a must to achieve our goal of continuous delivery. So what can we learn from customers that have started the journey? In North America, we have many customers that have been driving CICD ways of working for quite some years. In Asia Pacific, we see customers that have already completed successful upgrades using in-service software upgrade ways of working on the 5G core. In Europe, we see customers have completed Horizon 3 style upgrades using in-service software upgrades combined with pipelines. So let's summarize. Transformation here is not optional. It's actually essential to manage the number of changes in the 5G core. We need to embrace the three Ps, and that is people, process, and platform. And we need to set a guiding light and be clear on the strategy for return on investment. So the next question to ask yourself is where do you see yourself on this journey?